All right, I got a question for you over on the pair deck, which can be located. Let's see. Uzi AF is what that says. Uzi? <laughs> Dude, what is going on? Come on, bro. All right, and over there on the Uzi AF pair deck. I want you to write something. I want you to draw something. Here's what I want you to draw. Mm -hmm. All right. So I've got these two buggies here. Okay. And what I want you to imagine is let's say we just elaborate a little bit differently. Let's say we got these two buggies side by side. You're putting the tapes down for them. At the same time. So imagine what this looks like. So I'm going to set these two things down. We're going to go three, two, one, go. Mark. 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 Okay? So if you did that and you looked at it afterwards, what would that look like? The tape mark. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you got a red buggy, you got a blue buggy. Three, two, one, go. Mark. 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 Okay? So if you're putting tape marks down for each buggy, on the draw something, can you draw what the tape marks would look like after we've done that? Okay, what's that going to look like? And you have control of color. You have control of, like, weight. So just kind of... Use the color to keep the red buggy distinct from the blue buggy. Okay. For the short kids. Mark. 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 What's that going to look like? Come on, right there. So here's some examples of what folks drew. It goes a little something like this. Uh, they look like they're green. So can you just have a little conversation with your neighbor there in our online in-person class? Uh, what are the key features of this for the blue buggy, for the red buggy? What do they have in common, and how do they differ? How about that? There we go. Sorry, I 
So that's my question to you. Okay, I'm here on the pair deck. What are these? What do they have in common, the blue buggy and the red buggy here? But then also, how are they different, the red buggy and the blue buggy? Looks like, this is just a sampling, but it looks pretty universal. Tell me whether without color, what do you think? That's never going to make it up on the projector. <laughs> Ooh, some of you are using words that I don't think they mean what you think they mean. Keep it simple. Ten hundred most common words. All right. So kind of in general, whoops, whoops, here we go. Um, so more distance between the blue marks versus the red ones. The blue buggy travels faster. Blue points have more spacing than the red points. Constant speed, red is slower though. Okay, so the one thing I'm not, oh, I've got this frozen. Lo siento. All right, so more distance between the blue marks versus red ones. Blue buggy travels faster. Blue points have more spacing than the red points. Constant speed, red is slower though. Constant speed, this is the one thing, and I apologize if I didn't miss it. Oh boy. I'm not sure. Um, what is it about the image? Like, you all drew the same thing, so I think clearly you know what this looks like if the speed is constant, but I just need you to make that explicit for your neighbor there really quick. So when we look at this, we know the speed is constant, so let's go back to these, because why, okay? You don't need to put this in Pear Deck, I'm just asking you to hit up your neighbor about it. Ooh, cancel. So I guess, in other words, I can look at this and I can know the speed is constant if I see what? Let me do the out loud in person. What about this tells me constant speed for blue? The distance between. This is between the points the same, okay? Right? So it's that, that, that. Uh, whoever did that did a good job. Well, there's a graph background, so hopefully. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Is that yours? Yeah, it is. Oh, All right, so um, we can look at this and, and tell that the speeds are constant, yes? What can't we know from this? Run that by your neighbor really quick. Like what, what do we need to add to this representation? What's it not telling us? So, boop. okay, tweet your answers, bro. Don't write us in. What's missing here? Keeping it from being a really robust description of the motion. What can we add to it to make it more descriptive? <laughs> So our friends are saying what's missing, what's missing is like direction or units, the order of the points, okay, or a scale to base the points on, because there's no number line here, right? 
It doesn't tell the distance or the time frame. So let's go back to this thing um, and in person out loud, what can I add to this that's gonna tell us direction? Like right now, you can't tell the difference between and what can we add in here so you know which way it's going? You, with the finger. Arrows. Arrows, yeah, right? Arrows, okay. So I'm going to add in some arrows here. So let's draw, let's make them blue. And they're going to go like, oh, that's a really thin blue line. And there's a grid background, so I should be able to make these the same length. But I'm also really lazy, so I don't know that that happened. Um, I'm not connecting the dots with the arrows, okay, because that can be problematic for reasons we'll learn about later. And I don't know how good I did at drawing those all the same length, so then we're going to just borrow something from math. Little congruency tick marks, and if I add these in, then the viewer knows that those are all the same length. And I can go and I can do the same thing for our buddy down below, but again, it's not going as fast, so the arrows are going to be a little bit shorter. Shorter arrows. There should be like a duplicate feature. I'm sure there is. I'm too lazy to find it though. So I'm just going to go two tick marks, two tick marks, two tick marks. Boop, boop. Okay. So now we've settled the direction problem. How you settle the time problem, usually there's some kind of a declarative statement like uh, dots are... I forgot how to spell every for a second. Dots are every two seconds. Okay, so then I don't have to go through and label. Otherwise, I have to be like T equals zero seconds. T equals two seconds. That's lame. I don't want to have to do that. All right. Um, somebody said, so like distance. We don't have anything for distance here. So what I'm going to add in. If I can find a fatter line, let's find a fat, that's the fat line, okay, is um, is my little number line here, okay? So zero meters, two meters, and again, this is awkward because on our graph the other day, the horizontal axis was time, but on this number line, it's, uh, it's distance, because we know time based on the number of dots. Okay, you understand me? So this is uh, this is like the position axis, and the time information comes from the number of dots, okay? So if this is t equals zero, sometimes we circle the first dot so you know where it starts. t equals zero, two, four, six, eight, ten seconds worth of data. Zero, two, four, six, eight, ten seconds worth of data, okay? This type of a representational scheme is called a motion map and it's really again it's just based on those stroboscopic photos that we were checking out the other day it's the same type of idea okay um for this type of motion it's pretty pretty vanilla uh it's just going to be evenly spaced dots okay and the arrow links aren't changing but for more complex types of motions they can uh, they can reveal some pretty important things Okay, so when we're talking about a motion map, that's a motion map. Um, let me see. This was, ooh, this was us yesterday, right? So we talked about our graphs. The vertical intercept relates to the initial position. The sign of the slope indicates direction. Ooh, and then we defined a new word in here. When we say the word velocity in this classroom, it represents the slope on a position versus time graph. Okay. That's what velocity represents. So the sign matters, positive, negative. The number value matters, okay? And then that gives us a general form equation from the lab that says position as a function of time. Uh, that's equal to velocity times time plus initial position or starting position, whatever you want to call that. Pregunta. What, what? Exactly, yeah. So this is in the form y equals mx plus b. Comes from our graph. All right? But 
specific to this application, position equals velocity times time into this position. Okay. In the end, uh, well, not completely in the end, but in the close to the end, you're going to get an equation sheet that you can use on the AP exam. And really, the whole sheet could just say y equals mx plus b, y equals mx plus b, y equals mx plus b. Okay, because that's where a lot of these equations come from. That would be really helpful. You're just looking at it like, well, they're all y equals mx plus b. The specific version for this application is what's important. Position is a function of time equals velocity times time plus initial position. Think back to when we talked about the ball bounce lab or the wingspan lab or the shoe size lab. Maybe not the shoe size lab, but we talked a little bit about the limitations okay, of the data that we studied. Um, it's kind of limitations to this perhaps in that, well, it applies to buggy type of motion. We haven't studied any other types of motion right now, so this is a sufficient mathematical model, but it's science, so it's subject to revision. If we find other things later that we need to add to it, we can do that, all right? Um, so let's talk about marshmallows here a little bit. Um, I don't know if I have this in here or not. Maybe not. Nope. The marshmallow for this. We were trying to determine to what extent the motion of the buggy was what? Into the into the constant. You got it? Constant. Okay. Not continent. Constant. Okay. Um and again, we established that with the motion. I wish this thing did that. Uh, we established that with the motion map, right? There's evidence from the motion map that, yeah, it is constant, okay? So these are the motion maps. This is the equation for an object that is obeying the constant velocity particle model, okay? Constant velocity, we got an idea what that is. Particle model because, well, I can represent it as a dot. I don't have to worry about its extent, okay? I don't have to like draw the actual buggy and deal with the length of it, the width of it or anything. Okay? So this is just a particle model. There will be other models later on in the year where we do have to care about the care about the length of it and so on and so forth. Um, but not for this one. This is kind of a basic simple model. All right. Cool with that, cool with that. If there was anything else I wanted to add in there. So let's take a peek at this worksheet three, okay? Did you get a chance to have a go at that? Yeah. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and, and avail yourself of worksheet three. And again, I asked you to skip the first couple. We'll see if that's problematic, if it asks us about what happened in trial two or something. That might be a, an issue. Um, let's see, zero goes up to 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this has got to go by twos. I'm looking at the time axis, not the position axis. That's dumb. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, if you need a copy of this, there should be some over by the red basket. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. That's time in seconds. So it's going to start off at zero, zero. Then it's at two, two. Then it's at four, four. Then it's at six. No, I'm doing this wrong. Six, four. Six, four. 8, 3, 10, 2, 12, 2, what? 14, 5. That's crazy. 16, 8. Okay. Now, Mr. Harding said, don't connect the dots. That's for your own data. Okay. This is a little different. This is a data set that I'm giving you, so you are going to connect the dots here. Because these can be taken as exact. Mr. Harding, we can't see yellow. Mr. Harding, the screen is frozen. We haven't seen what you've been doing for the last 10 minutes. Oh, um, okay. So here's our graph of position versus time. And again, this is the thing I said was dumb the other day. 
physics people use x to represent position. So here we have x on the y-axis. So I don't like x. I prefer we write position, but whoever I stole this worksheet from thought x was sufficient. Okay. So there's the graph. Um, what is happening between the time interval four to six seconds? Okay. What's going on there? So let's throw that. What? Boop. All right. Feed me, Seymour. What are you getting there? What's going on between four to six seconds? And more importantly, how do you know? That's the graph. Mm. Oh, man. I like that answer. Ooh. All right, I'm going to lock this because I got something I want you to discuss. Consider that statement. Uh, so now yes, no. Do you agree with that statement that the speed is constant? Don't make me try to do anything about it. No. I hate eyes and feet. <laughs> and teeth. All right. Speed is constant. That's pretty straightforward, right? We're a wise room of physicists. We got this already. Ooh. 11 to 8. 11 yeses, 8 noes to the speed is constant. So discuss that with your neighbor really quick. Perhaps the simplest way to think about this is if we just rolled out the number line. Right, so if I got my number line here, So if I'm doing this, I'm going to start at 0 at time 0. Here's position 0. And then 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, I'm at 2 meters, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, I'm at 4 meters. Uh, ooh, I'm at 4 meters. 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, I'm still at 4 meters. Okay. Now what do I have to do next? Move. I gotta go to position three. That's over here. 
six one thousand, seven one thousand, eight one thousand, nine one thousand, ten one thousand. I should be back at two meters. Eleven one thousand, twelve one thousand. I'm still at two meters. So between four and six, between ten and twelve, I'm at the same position at the beginning and end of those time intervals, which tells us what. My position is the SAIM same, okay? So my position does not change, okay? Is my speed constant? So we're 50 50 on that. What is my speed at the beginning of that interval? What is my speed at the end of that interval? What does it mean for something to be constant? It stays the same. So if my velocity was, or my speed or velocity, was zero and then is zero, did it change? So, not how most people would have phrased it, but how about right now? Is my speed constant? Yes. Zero and it's staying zero. Okay. So, a constant speed of zero is a thing. Okay. Think about my guy on the uh, moving sidewalk, right? He had a constant speed of zero relative to the moving sidewalk. Okay. Uh, but then since the moving sidewalk had a constant speed relative to the airport, the speed is constant. All right, it's all relative to your point of view. So speed is constant. It also happens to be zero. AKA at rest would be kind of the normal statement for that, okay? How do we know? How do you know? That's something I'll write a lot on tests if you don't explain your reasoning very thoroughly. HDYK, how do you know? Position doesn't change. Ooh, a new battery is making a world of difference for this pin. Uh, six to ten seconds. I'm going to say moving back towards zero, okay? Ooh, or I could say that differently and be a little more descriptive. I could say moving in the negative direction. Those are both true, but I think this one's maybe a little bit more specific. All right, how do I know that? Um, Position changes from four to two. We talked about that a little bit the other day. Okay, does anybody remember that fancy pants word? Cross. Say it right though. Say it right though. Put your pinky out. <laughs> Displacement. Okay. So position change from four to two, that means the displacement would be P2 minus P1. Okay, it ends up at two meters. Um, it started out at four. So the change in position would be two minus four would be negative two meters. Is that how math works? Right? You can see that on the graph. I you can see it on the graph. It was at two. I'm sorry, it was at four. Now it's at two. So if this is P2, this is P1. P2 minus P1 equals negative two. I moved two meters in the negative direction is what that's telling me. Uh, skater's average velocity from time zero to 16 seconds. Okay, so this is... The why we're doing the sheet, basically, is I wanted to get these things out, okay? Average velocity, when we're using that term, that's going to be the displacement divided by the time elapsed, okay? Um, that's kind of like your, your GPS, as it were. It's a position reading, okay? So what is the position at 6, i.e., position at 16, P16, that's going to be 8 meters, P0, Position at time zero, that was zero meters, okay? So the change in position uh, from zero to 16, I'm going to take position at 16 minus position at zero. 
8 meters minus 0 meters. That's a displacement of 8 meters. To get the average velocity, I don't want to introduce symbols quite yet. Let's just write this. Average velocity, that's going to be change in position divided by change in time. So 8 meters minus 0 divided by 16 seconds minus 0. If you put your units in your work, it's a lot harder to get the wrong units on your answer. 18 meters, 16, or sorry, 8 meters, 16 seconds. I hate fractions. You should too. Call that half a meter per second. Okay. So this is where it gets a little bit odd. Here we're talking about average speed. And the difference when we're talking about average speed is we're going to pay attention to the distance traveled, okay, and divide that by the time elapsed. So the example given here is the odometer reading, okay, or it could be your like your like Fitbit reading, right? So if I check it, I can't really see that very clearly. All right, I'm at 4,292 steps, okay. If I walk this way. Now I'm at 4,000. Right. So I walk this way, he sinks, jump. Bro. Wait, it's not just from today, the 4,000? Yeah. Dang. Well, apparently it's not changing. So much for that example. That's a crap example. They have some fancy new word on Amazon for like. Uh, Refurbished, I can't remember what they call it, like renewed. Like it went away on a retreat and now it's renewed, <laughs> which I think just means it doesn't work. All right, 4,292. So what I was hoping to get is 4,302, right? I walk 10 steps this way. And if I walk 10 steps this way, it's going to be 4,312. It just keeps adding up. Yeah, there we go, 4,303, okay? So it just keeps totaling up. It doesn't care about the direction, okay? So odometer reading or Fitbit just totals up the distance without regard for direction. And so if you look at this, how far did I walk in total? In this stretch, I went from zero to four. So this stretch was four meters. This is zero meters. This is, again, I don't care about direction. I went two meters. Here I went zero meters. And then in the end, I went poop. Wait, it's not frozen. And then in the end, I went from two to eight. So I went six meters. So total distance. Like a Fitbit or an odometer is just going to add them all up. So four meters plus zero plus two meters plus zero meters plus six meters. Who's got a calculator handy? Oh, even my Clinton High School math can handle this. That's uh, thanks to me. Uh, 12 meters. Okay. That's the total distance. That's different than what I got for the displacement. Total distance. So average speed equals um, total distance over total time. So in this case, 4 plus 0 plus 2 plus 0 plus 6 meters over 16 seconds. 12 meters over 16 seconds. Uh, three fourths. Fractions made me vomit in my mouth. There we go. Somebody had a slope on their graph the other day, and I'm going to throw out the fraction. I think we did this six hour yesterday. I'm going to throw out a fraction, 
and you tell me the decimal. First one gets a prize, okay? So the fraction is 18 24 or let's throw out there let's see what this is always the fun I have with like sockets right which one is bigger here uh 1936 or seven twelve. okay there's always one in every room it's you but you can write fractions, but nobody else. Okay. And I'll still take off half points because I don't like fractions. All right. Um, 0.75 meters per second. So another feature of that is that speed and average speed, those are always positive numbers because it doesn't care about direction. That average velocity could be negative. If you're changing position, your displacement is negative. Uh, so in what situation is average speed a better measure of motion than average velocity? And in what situation is average velocity a better measure of motion than average speed? Tell you what, let me take you back over to this thing. Um, and I bet I'm on the wrong page. Let's go back one. Hey, Charlie. Charlie somehow bruised his lip at his band lesson yesterday. I don't know how that happened. You think in your mind? Uh, he's, no, he's... Uh, Fifth grader, I think. All right. So can you see what's going on there? Let me shut off the lights. What are you looking at? Be specific. Sorry. What football fields? Which football? Field? Who said Big Ten? Big Ten? How many are there? Um, yeah. Fourteen. It's not the Big Ten. Away. That's right. Numbers are kind of fuzzy. Yeah, the fourteen stadiums of the Big Ten here, friend. Uh, are there still fourteen? So this is including Rutgers and that other one. Maryland. Yeah, Tenet is, I think, that one. Okay. Uh, Ohio State, Michigan, when they were working on the field. Anyways, we got all the Big Ten stadia in here. Eidelheim? No, they didn't actually put all the stadiums together. No, 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 no. It looks like an aerial. Fair enough question. So what they're, what they're trying to illustrate here, though, is something else entirely. And unfortunately, the image is too faded for you to see it. Uh, I can see it really well on my computer screen. There's another stadium that they're inside, okay? There's another stadium that they're inside here. It is, uh, that's not helping, is it? Kind of? See it? Okay. How many people fit in Kinnick nowadays? Oh, you can't see that. That's crap. 68,000, they shrank down the capacity? That's dumb. Chairbacks. Because people got bigger. That's another problem. I went to an event this uh, August that I hadn't been at for a while. And uh, if you look at the chair backs, like you can see how it used to be 36 seats in a row and now it's 29. Okay. That's like the, the obesification of America or something going on there. Like what is that? Come on. That should make people sad. Um, instead, it just makes them have diabetes. <laughs> Uh, one of my apologies if this is your grandparent, but one of my friends made the comment like, "Look at the line of one-legged people for the elevator, like losing limbs to the beatus. It's it's tough." All right. So, anyways, um, that's what's happening. That's Norm Parker. All right. So, um, don't at me, bro. So this thing that we're looking at here is a stadium that holds four hundred eighty thousand people. Okay, four hundred eighty thousand people. It's the uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And every Memorial Day weekend, they have a race there. It's a 500 mile race around this track. Okay, it's a 200, sorry, two and a half mile affair. Okay, track, two and a half miles, uh, 200 
laps, 500 miles. So here's my question to you. Um, you know, and it takes a, it, it takes a few hours for it to get done, I think, like a little over a couple hours, a little under three. Uh, I want you to guess at what is the record uh, record for the average speed of the winner. I'm wanting you to guess at it. I don't want you to Google it. Okay, so what's the record average speed of the winner? Let's go ahead and throw that into the old uh, thing. Where'd the thing go? Here's the thing. Pear deck. Boop. New question. Short text. All right. Uh, go ahead and guess at that. What do you think the record average speed for the winner is? Uh, miles per hour. Yeah, this is in Canada. We don't do kilometers per hour. I always hate that when I'm watching like an F1 race. I'm like, whoa, 300. Oh, wait, that's kilometers per hour. That's weak. Okay. I'm trying to make their cars look faster by using the I did that to my sister once. I had a really dope uh, 1988 Chrysler Bear when I was in college. I wasn't in college in 1988. Uh, but it was a real sweet car. It had a digital dashboard. Like the speedometer was just digital. And there was a little button over on the side you could do to like switch it between US and metric. So anytime I let her borrow it, I hit that, turn it into metric. She wouldn't read the units. She'd be like driving down the road going like <laughs> 60, but actually she's going 36 or however math works there, okay? Because because it's metric. <laughs> it's uh it's kilometers per hour. So yeah, that was fun. She always thought my car was slow. She was slow. <laughs> That's true. All right. I didn't sleep much last night. Sorry for the last one spoken. All right. So record average speed for the winner. Let's see what our friend said here. Um uh, boop. Six miles an hour, that would be a pretty boring race. 150 miles an hour, 500 miles an hour, that'd be a pretty quick race. 169, 43, 160, 200,000. All right, let's 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 go ahead and do that thing. So, uh, record average speed in the 500. Is, whoa, bro, just under 240, 237 miles per hour. That's the qualifying record, the actual race record. That oops, I'm frozen. So 237 miles an hour was a four-lap uh, qualifying speed record. Still is. Um, the race record that year was like 232. It was the same year. And then they kind of realized, like, wait, this is really dangerous. We shouldn't go this fast. So they started adding more drag to the cars and uh, safety features. Um, but that, that's pretty high average speed. That's the average speed. If I change the question and I ask you, what is the record average velocity of the winner? Let's see who's picking up on the finer details here. Average velocity. Think about how races work with the car. What do you know about races? There are lots of them. There could be the NASCAR, could be the F1, could be the IndyCar. They are fast. <laughs> Oh, I forgot to do the thing. Are you updating your answers over here? Maybe I need to do a new question. Oh, man, what would you do that for? It should be a simple answer. All right. Record average velocity, what do you got for it? Zero, zero, 237 meters per second, 150, zero light years per nanosecond, zero feet per second, 160 multi-purpose rooms, 100 miles an hour, 237, 237, big fat zero, all right, zero, zero, zero. All right, so, yeah, when we're talking about velocity, keep in mind, average velocity cares about the change in position. And if you're winning the race, you start right here. This is P1. You end right here. This is also P2. So your change in position from start to finish is like a big middle finger to the environment. Okay? Because these things, I can't remember what the rate of 
of fuel consumption is, but it's like measured in not like uh, miles per gallon, but more like gallons per minute. Okay. Cause it's a lot. And in the end, you're right where you started. Okay. Eat that global warming. So change the position here would be zero meters or zero miles. So it doesn't matter whether you do it in two and a half hours, which is pretty common nowadays or five hours, like back in the day, every year, the winner has the same average velocity. Zero miles per hour because they don't go anywhere. There's no displacement. So there's no average velocity. So look out for that because that's like a pretty sneaky sis type of way to ask about the difference between velocity and speed. But that's kind of what these questions are getting at here. In what situation is average speed a better measure of motion than average velocity? When you have a race like that where the displacement is zero. Okay. What situation would average velocity be a better measure of motion than average speed? Um, this, I haven't made this trip in a while, but uh, one of my nerd hobbies is, uh, is pinball machine repair. Because I wouldn't you have six or seven pinball machines at your house. Uh, and so I, I drove over to Ohio a few years back to, to go get some pinball machines because, you know, that made sense. Uh, the state of Indiana, when you pull into Indiana on the western edge of the state, you go through a toll booth and you get a little, like, it's kind of like the parking ramp ticket, okay? And then when you leave on the eastern edge of Indiana, you hand that ticket to the booth and they run it through and they tell you, or if you pull off at South Bend or Lafayette or somewhere else in Indiana, based on how far you traveled in Indiana, that affects what your toll is. Okay, you travel all the way across the state, sure, it's a certain amount of toll. Now, in addition to that, they not only look at how far you travel, they also look at the time it took for you to get there. Okay, so if you get to the eastern edge of Indiana quicker than you should, in addition to your toll for the road use, you also get it. Speeding ticket based on your average <laughs> So, so what's a boy to do? Like, if, if you enjoy driving, you know, a healthy three or twelve miles an hour over the speed limit, what do you need to do then? Stop yeah. overnight. Well, you don't need to stop. Oh my gosh, how bad is you driving? For a sandwich or something, right? Or a yeah. little quick little potty break or something. Okay, because then that's going to add to your total time and it's going to bring down your average velocity. All right. But just a little pro tip there on speed checks that take advantage of average velocity. All right. Uh, so this wants you to rank the following graphs from beginning to end of the motion. And it says here that zero is greater than negative and ties are possible. Okay. So that means that Zero is greater than negative two is greater than negative four. So be mindful of that. That might factor into how you go about answering this. Um, let me clear up my pair deck. We only got a minute. Cool. This is your exit slip today. Did you understand what we were talking about in the lesson? Let's find out. Oh, you said a minute. That was like 30 seconds. I want a 30 second thing to come on so I don't try to go over. So I guess check that out for tomorrow. Have a great rest of the Tuesday. Oh, uh, that that aspect of it, yeah. Come in knowing your answer tomorrow. The ranking based on the average velocity.